Good morning guys, how are you doing? Today is Wednesday, I'm home alone as I am pretty much every weekday now. And I got a bit of a rough start to the morning, let's just put it that way. Woke up with a horrible, terrible, pounding headache. I wouldn't necessarily call it a migraine, but it was pretty nasty. Christina was nice enough to run downstairs and grab me some medication to help. And after she took the kids to school and daycare and everything this morning, I actually ended up laying down on the couch and fell asleep for another hour or so, which was lovely. But I'm up and I'm showered and I'm clean. I actually took a little bit of time yesterday and again this morning to start working on the video about this, the Oral-B Genius 8000. Sorry, I'm too close to the mics. But I tried that thing out for the first time this morning and I'm not gonna say it was like an amazing experience or anything. I think I was using the wrong brushing head, but it was definitely nice to get that feedback of when I was brushing too hard and to make sure that I was brushing every single part of my mouth because there are things that I've probably been missing that hopefully I will not miss moving forward because it's tied to my phone, it uses the camera to watch where I'm brushing. Very cool. Video on that is coming very soon. I also thought I might take just a minute this morning and show you my sort of work setup. You can see it in the background, obviously. But this is the way that I've been working lately. Basically, since I got my, my new MacBook Pro for a very long time, for like a year at least, I worked at this treadmill desk on this MacBook Pro, my work machine, and anything that I wanted to do work or personal was done on this machine, including videos, including personal browsing and banking and everything else. After a while, I realized obviously that was a very bad idea, and this is a 15-inch MacBook Pro. It's not terribly great for traveling, so I bought the 13-inch MacBook Pro to go along with it. And as you may be able to see there, I've got a USB Type-C cable going from the old Pro to the new Pro. That keeps it nice and charged up. When I'm not using it heavily, when I'm not editing video and everything, it does help keep it topped up. It's not a super strong charge that's coming through it or anything, it's just a nice little trickle that's coming through. But I've been able to edit video on it and it does help to keep it from completely dying while I'm editing and rendering, which is nice. But I'm able to stand here on the treadmill desk and do some walking and working and everything. And also, if I want to do something personal, if I want to watch a YouTube video or something while I'm working, flip open my laptop and get some stuff done there. Now you might also be asking the question, Jordan, what happened to more footage and more content about the RX-10 Mark III? I do still have it. I am still using it. I took it to the Lexington Legends game with Christina's family the other night and it performed amazingly well. I did some shots and some videos from that, which I'm not going to show because I'm saving that for a whole full wrap-up video. But then I took it to Duncan's baseball game last night. And I guess maybe it's just where kids baseball is a whole lot less predictable. I gotta put this thing down. I'm gonna get a tripod. Much, much better. Like I was saying, I don't know if it's necessarily because kids baseball is a whole lot less predictable than adults baseball, but I was not able to get the camera into the position that I needed it to. I was not able to get it to quickly focus and I was not able to do all the shots that I needed to do, the shots that I wanted to do in a timely fashion. So I got very, very frustrated with it. I actually, in the middle of Duncan's game last night, did a full factory reset on it and of course, that's not going to make anything any better. So I think what I need to do, Duncan's got another game on Thursday. Again, today's Wednesday. I need to take some time today, tonight, this evening, whatever, and try to spend some time taking photos and videos with it to see if I can get more comfortable. Taking photos of things that are really far away, making sure that the focus locking track on and everything, focus tracking and lock on and everything, making sure that works appropriately, getting more comfortable and more familiar with the high frame rate modes, the 480 and 960 frames per second modes, even 240 frames per second. 480 is where I spent most of the time so far. The Legends game, wow, ridiculous stuff there. But anyway, just taking some time to get comfortable and familiar with that, because otherwise I, I don't want to do this, but I'm going to end up returning it if I get too frustrated with it and just taking the A6000, the A6300, not the A6000, with me when I go places, and a bag full of lenses, and I don't want to do that. That's why I bought the RX-10, was so I wouldn't have to have a bag of lenses. But anyway, it's almost 11 a.m. I need to get back to doing day job stuff. I've got a couple of things that I'm working on that I've been banging my head against the wall about, trying to connect Jenkins to our Active Directory it's a bit of a mess and I've been trying for several days. I've been working with our Active Directory administrator as well as just reading tutorials online and for whatever reason it's just saying error. So that kind of stinks. Still loving this tripod. I haven't mentioned what I'm I'm not using a gorilla pod or anything right now. I'm just using the BC Master tripod. It was a video that I made a month or so ago. It's a carbon fiber tripod. I've got it sitting on a table right now but I just used it upstairs because it's very lightweight and it's very flexible and it goes really, really tall. But I've also got a Manfrotto fluid head on it, so if I want to, I can move around pretty fluidly and it's decent looking footage doing so. Although the arm is now moving because I didn't tighten it enough. That's better. I can also pan up and down with it nice and smoothly. I can adjust the up and down. There we go. There's a little knob on the side that I can do, which makes it pan up and down faster or slower, smoother and easier and whatever else. Put it back to be normal. That's a whole lot looser. 
like that. But anyway, like I said, I need to get back to my little workstation. If something comes up, I will definitely be sure to let you know. I will probably be taking a little bit of time here in a little while to work on some videos. I've got two or three or something that I need to edit over there, so I'll probably work on that as well. Other than that, it's just another day. And that, I think, was a pretty good productive morning. Sorry, I'm on the treadmill. I got the footage that I've shot on this so far edited. I got the Oral-B toothbrush video done and uploading. Even did some day job work, reached out to a couple of people, asked for help and things like that. I've got like five or six packages that are supposed to be delivered in a little while, but I have to run out to Walmart and actually to the UPS store because I'm still waiting. I'm going to be sending off the Nikon J1, so I have to go do that. Unfortunately, and I think it's going to be tomorrow that this will happen, packages from Amazon are going to start coming back, the things that I traded in. That's okay. It's definitely one of those days, but I got to get on the road. Unfortunately, somehow over the course of this morning, I managed to forget to eat lunch. It's almost one o'clock already and I, yeah, didn't even think about it. But I've got my UPS box. We're heading to the UPS store now. Probably ought to open the overhead so you can see a little better in here. Boy, people drive way too fast in my neighborhood. Somebody's just flying by. But I figure while I'm out, I'll grab some lunch or something. Not a big deal. Uh-oh, fire trucks and ambulances coming. Hopefully everything's okay. That was entertaining. Something's going on. And really, I've just got to hope that while I'm out doing these things, getting lunch and whatnot, that UPS and FedEx don't both show up demanding signatures because I'm not going to be there. It hasn't been a problem in the past. More often than not, UPS will just drop the package and run. FedEx, on the other hand, sort of depends on the day. In terms of what's actually coming today, I've ordered a bunch of stuff on Amazon lately, but I think the FedEx packages are actually a couple of gates for the stairs because I don't know if I mentioned it in the last vlog, but Ellis has decided to climb the stairs. When Christina's parents were here over the weekend, he started going up a stair or two and then kind of flopping back. And then right after they left, he climbed all of them. Like I was behind him making sure he was okay and making sure he wasn't falling. And he literally just climbed the stairs, hands and feet, didn't use his knees, was climbing the stair. Got to the top and of course made a beeline for Duncan's room so he could go play basketball. I swear that boy and balls is just like Duncan was when he was little. Although from time to time we'll catch Ellis. He'll crawl over into the corner, grab a book, and look at the pictures I presume. So he may be a little bit like me because I was into sports and stuff when I was little but I was also huge into reading and into books. I would still be more into books if I had the time for it but I spend so much time doing YouTube videos and working from home you get that line that blurs. I was just thinking the other day when I worked at Lexmark I used to take so many breaks during the day. Not a huge amount or anything, but I would take probably two breaks a day in addition to lunch and just go walking for like a half a mile to a mile each time with an audiobook playing in my ears the whole time. Which meant that I went through an awful lot of books, like 30 or 40 books in a year, and I probably have not read a single book in the last two years since I started my new job. Something I probably need to get back to. Christine and I were talking about it. Maybe what I ought to start doing is at set times during the day, go out and just go for a walk or even go for a run and take my phone and take some headphones and listen to audiobooks again, just getting back into it. Maybe work with Audible and try to get a sponsorship for the tech channel. Who knows? I did have an Audible affiliate link before, but I never actually had that full go to audible.com slash Jordan or whatever. It was like audibletrial.com slash twill or I don't know. If you want to try it out, go for it. But realistically, the biggest thing that helps me from anybody watching my videos is just going to Amazon and using my affiliate link at Amazon. I've got a link down in the description I always put out there. But if you don't want to use it, don't use it. I don't care. And say goodbye to the Nikon J1. Well, that was nice and unexpected. Over near our UPS store, there's a Radio Shack and there was a gigantic store closing sign on it. Unfortunate for them, pretty much impossible to compete with stores like Best Buy and of course online retailers like Amazon. So I bought a few things. I think the original total was supposed to be something like 60 bucks, something like that. And I ended up with a micro HDMI to HDMI cable. You can never have too many of these, especially with a camera like this one that does not have a flip out monitor. Now I've got an eight foot cable that I can hook into an external monitor. Picked up a little tiny low pro bag for, I don't know if this is gonna work for me or not, but I thought I would give it a shot. For small cameras, figured I could put it on a belt. I'm gonna see if it'll work with the LX10, but it's probably gonna be too small for that. But we try, it was three bucks. And then actually something I was looking at online just last night, the low pro, it's the edit 100 bag. It's not particularly big, but it might actually be big enough for this camera. It was six bucks, 650, 699, I don't know. 
It was less than $7 and it's in fine condition. It's a little old looking, but it has lots of pockets. It's small. I think it's probably gonna be too small for the RX-10, unfortunately. But if I'm carrying this camera around, especially if I'm carrying it with a second lens, I think this is actually gonna be just the right size. And again, seven bucks. I'm happy about this. Time to run to Walmart and then finally grab some lunch now that it's after one o'clock. Mission accomplished. Christine also had me pick up some stuff for her. Got it. Well, got a little cut off there. I was opening my box to check what I'd actually picked up to make sure, because normally they open it at Walmart and check it for you. This person did not, but there was somebody that was like actively waiting in line for my parking spot and giving me the nasty look because I didn't immediately put my stuff in and run away. <sighs> you gotta love how people get in a huge hurry. But I've got about an hour and a half until Duncan gets off the bus. Definitely a lot later than I had anticipated being out, but still early enough that I can have a little bit of lunch. So we might as well do that. My passenger seat's a bit of a mess at the moment. <laughs> By the way, I tested briefly putting this camera into the bigger bag that I showed you a minute ago. Fits perfectly with the 10 to 18 millimeter lens as long as I take the lens hood off, which means if I switch over to the 16 to 50, it'll have loads of room in there. It'll be good. And of course there's extra pockets for batteries and filters and whatever else I happen to want to carry. I like that. And of course, I finished all my errands. I just got two emails from FedEx saying that my packages had been delivered. For some reason, the, the doorbell didn't go off, but the kid that mows our grass for us has been there, so I keep getting notifications from that. So it's possible that it just hadn't timed out or something. And during that, oops, I haven't timed out yet, FedEx pulled up, dropped them, and ran. But the good thing there is it does mean that UPS hasn't run yet, so I haven't gotten any emails about that. And I've got three packages coming from UPS today, and I think one of them is the Panasonic G7. So I definitely don't want to miss that. And can I just go back one more time and say how much I enjoy this wide angle lens. I have it zoomed in all the way right now, so it's mainly just getting me. But at any time, I can just reach over and do this, and it zooms all the way out, and you can see everything that's going on. I seriously almost took the lens back to Best Buy. I kept saying, well, 16 millimeters is wide enough. I don't need this 10 to 18. It's like $700 I could get back. And then immediately after that, Ellis started taking steps and I was able to capture him thanks to this lens. And I've been using this in the car. And again, I'm easily able to capture everything thanks to the lens. But don't get too hasty to take stuff back. Got the mail and the baby gates. And just in case you were curious about these, these are trunk organizers. And they were like seven bucks marked down from 20 or something silly like that. I mean, from what I can tell, you just unstrap this and this, and then they should expand. Yeah, it's nothing that's big and super useful or anything, but it does give you a couple of big pockets to stick stuff in in the back of your car. And for seven bucks to have something that I could easily fold out and have a useful, usable space, I'm okay with that. It's even got a couple of little bungee pockets on the end, so if you want to stick stuff in there, that'll work too. And then of course, when you're not using it, you just fold these bottom flaps up and collapse it all back down, strap the sides back together, and you're good. And by the way, have I mentioned it's an absolutely gorgeous day out there. They said it was going to be like 55 or something. It's 60 right now and it's, it's great. At least that's what my watch says. And now for the moment of truth. I've got this little low pro case. Let's see if the LX10 fits inside. I don't think it's going to. Well, no, not really. No, unfortunately it's, it's not going to do it. I mean, it's close. It's super close if you can see that, but no, it will not zip up. I mean, I guess if I just really wanted a place to be able to stick it down in a pocket and have it be sort of secure in there, but able to come out at a moment's notice, this would probably work out all right, but it's just ever so slightly too small, which stinks, but again, it was three bucks. So the worst case scenario, I can give this to somebody who does own a smaller pocket camera. We're all right. Okay, this is a little more than I was expecting. So let's see, this is a return from Amazon. Stuff I bought from Amazon, something from Adorama, broken on the end. The package is actually sticking out. And then one from Smart Solutions Products. I'm not sure, sorry, they're mowing outside. Not sure who this is from. Never mind, I do know who it's from. This is one that I thought had gotten lost in the mail. Ugh, donut vendor, Vertrag BT. Bluetooth speakers, a pair, heavy. Let's get seated. Let's see, what did I order from Adorama? Yes, absolutely yes. Surui 3T 35K aluminum magnesium tripod as recommended by Jacqueline from Nothing But Tech. 
Probably not gonna turn this into a tech video or anything, but I've been using this gorilla pod that I'm currently filming this on for a while and it's getting floppy. It still works a whole lot better than the super cheap generic one that I had. Look at that. It's got a full travel carrying pouch and that's all of it. But by default, this is it. This is the tripod. That's pretty neat. Oh, and it's got, oh, that's neat. That's a really neat little mechanism. Looking forward to trying this out. Looks like Duncan's getting off the bus though. Hello. Hello. How is school? Good. Very school-like. Mm -hmm. Woo! Well, spent a couple of minutes messing about with this, and there's actually like several different configurations you can use with it, which is awesome. But most likely I will just use it with the default, the way that it came, because, I mean, as you can see here, it gets decently small, and then he's mowing right outside the window. Awesome. But I mean, look at that. That's a tripod. That's something I can put this camera on, use the little ball head at the top to put it at whatever angle I want to, quick release it when I want to quick release it. There you go, it just comes off like that. And I could technically put a Manfrotto quick release head on top of this instead, because that's what I use with all my other stuff is these Manfrotto quick release plates. Awesome. But then hold it out at a right angle, should be a little more comfortable. Love that. This is a lot more neat mechanism than I thought it was going to be too. You just flip that out like that and you have a tripod stand. I've never seen that done. You can even use this little carabiner clip on it so you can carry the entire thing from your belt loop if you really want to do. I'm really happy with this purchase. Let's see. <laughs> oh, the irony. So I bought a really short mono price micro HDMI to HDMI cable that comes in the day that I just bought an eight foot micro HDMI cable. That's okay. I think that cable, given that it was so much shorter, was like three or four dollars. But this, this is a little more exciting for me. This is a lot more solid than I really expected. Wow, that's metal with plastic on it. This is an NPF battery plate. I think that's right. The big NP batteries, like an F970 battery, I think. You can put those Sony batteries on this and then this mounts to the back of my little monitor over there. Monitor. And then presumably I can plug this in and actually use it to power it. Fits like a glove, just tested it. I'll have to screw this onto the back of it, but now if I want to actually take this monitor with me, I, I can. That is lovely. And now we check to see what Amazon sent back. All right then. So the first things to show back up are the GX850 and the Olympus. I think I mentioned it earlier. I did actually just get a gift. I think I got a gift card. At least I got an email about a gift card for my Kindle. Of all the things I sent in, the Kindle's the one that they want to keep. Okay. Now this is the camera. They said had major cracks and dents. The screen is pristine. Oh, there's a, is that a scratch or a crack? That may actually be a crack in the frame. I thought it was a hair on it when I put it back in the box. Everything looks perfect on it, except for one little teeny place. I don't know if you can even see that, but there's a little hairline what is presumably a crack on the bottom. And yeah, I think that was actually there when I sent it off, so I can't complain too much. So we've got another camera back in the house. And the Olympus, they said, was lightly scratched. Let's just see. The lens is perfect. The body is, oh, there's a very light. Boy, that's loud. There is a teeny tiniest little very light scratch on the screen. So lesson learned. Don't send things to Amazon unless you're willing to take less than what they want to offer, meaning don't send things to Amazon, most likely. I did send out the Nikon J1, like I said, and I'm just gonna let them keep it no matter what because the, the value, the varying value was somewhere between like two and $300 for it. And it's like a five-year-old camera that doesn't do 1080p 60, doesn't do 4K. Fun little camera, but it just didn't really meet any of my needs and it's years and years old. So if I get two or 300 bucks out of it, awesome. Disappointed about the other stuff though. But hey, B-roll camera. Nice little travel camera, works with all the lenses. The biggest problem with this was it didn't have manual controls in video mode and there were terrible autofocus sounds, but I've heard that that's even not so bad in 4K mode, so maybe I'll do that. Either way, I've got this Sony camera and it's lovely, but I think that's all of the packages. Now, now I've just gotta clean up all of the mess. And I've switched over to the little Sirui mini tripod. So far, just holding it in this hand, comfortable. And actually it was not terribly difficult to install. This could actually be like the perfect vlogging setup. And there you go, we've got the Sony A6300, we've got the 10 to 18 millimeter lens, the Sarui tripod, monopod thing, whatever you want to call this, with its little fold out legs, the Comica microphone with its Rode windscreen on it, and my battery's already at 35%. And therein lies the problem with these little Sony cameras. The battery life is just not good. But Duncan's home now, I think he's doing his homework upstairs. Good boy. I probably ought to go check on him, see what he's up to. And I pulled another extremely amateur vlogging move. I did something and didn't record it. I went ahead and installed this first baby gate. And do feel free to let me know how I did it wrong in the comments because I know that I didn't do an amazing job. But the way that our house is designed, this is the only stud over here until like 18 inches that way or something. So I actually had to mount it right here next to the door frame 
and then I had the banister on the other side. So I've used the round banister mount here, square mount down there. It's solid enough that I can pull on it and it doesn't move. It's just, as you can see from the stair, it's crooked. But pinch it here, pull up, it does open, and it does hang freely, which means it's not pulling itself off the wall, which is great. You bring it back, pinch it, lift it. Putting it back one-handed is gonna be a problem, of course. There we go. So that's gonna be loads of fun to do in the middle of the night or the morning. But that's one that's done. We're gonna do another one at the top of the stairs, which I'm really not looking forward to, but it has to be done. Ellis, while it's wonderful that he's learning to crawl upstairs and, and learning to walk and everything, we don't want him doing it when we're not there to help and to watch, and this will hopefully, hopefully, prevent that. Unless he just randomly decides to start crawling up this, which I would not be surprised at all. Anyway, it's about that time. We've got to go get Ellis. Switching over to the phone camera. Look at that one. He's so pitiful and sleepy. Are you hungry? We're going nice. for dinner, and I left my camera. Somebody was like, come on, let's go. Uh-oh, we just got ah! home, and he just realized this is here. What are you going to do now? <laughs> He's just been jerking on it and yelling, Mama, Mama. He wants to tell him. He wants to tell him that I blocked the gate. I blocked the stairs off. Mean Daddy. My super mean daddy. I'm leaving. Also on the way home, I made sure we stopped by Radio Shack again just to see. They had like these little lightning to micro USB adapters and audio cables. I've been needing some shielded cables so that I can replace the one on this one. There's a USB-C to micro USB cable. This was two bucks. And then a flat panel TV anti-tip strap. Because I haven't shown it on here, but Ellis loves to smack the TV. And so it's like flops back and then tries to flop forward. He is so excited. And hating the fact that I've picked that gate up. Super mean. But we just bought a bunch of this, that, and the other. Hearing aid batteries for her dad, and a little emergency radio, and I think our total spent, I spent $12, and I think we, the family, spent 18, so like 30. We've spent a total of maybe 45 or 50 bucks there today, when we haven't spent money at Radio Shack in years. By the way, very quick test. I just switched over to using the one foot shielded audio cable, so we'll see if that works. We'll see if there's any background noise other than all the background noises that are going on. I only wish that it had been right angle on both ends. A one foot with right angles on both ends that shielded would be perfect. Well, we decided to do healthy stuff this evening. We got the boys into bed and everything, and Christina went for a quick run. When she got back, we got, uh, that's actually when we got the boys into bed. I went out for a quick run. I ran for like 25 minutes or something. Everything went great. I ran slowly. It was like a 12 minute mile, so not great. But then on the way back, I had a little bit of a stumble into a mailbox and bleeding warning. Managed to cut my arm up. It's not really that bad. I mean, it's not bleeding super hard or anything. It just stings. So I'm probably going to be going into the office on Friday and I will probably see if I can get a tetanus shot because it, it's been a while. But first, shower. And I know it's dark and I'm sorry. I went ahead and took my shower. Everybody else is now in bed. I'm just actually finishing up this edit. 
and it looks like it's at almost 25 minutes. So hopefully you guys enjoyed the sort of random off the wall 25 minutes of my day. I'm still not going back to doing this daily. It's just something that I've been having fun doing again, and especially since I've got the 6300. This camera is ridiculously amazing. This little Radio Shack cable is doing a pretty good job as well. I will continue to do these not every day, just whenever things are going on or when I feel like talking to the camera. But this was fun. I hope you guys enjoyed it as much as I did making it, and I'll see you again next time.